Hello everyone and welcome back to Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. I was watching The Crown the other night and there was an episode where Queen Elizabeth felt that she was inferior in her position because she thought she wasn't educated enough. So The Crown showed Queen Elizabeth getting a tutor to help her. I found out that the episode was um, kind of true in a way because she was a little, felt she could have been educated better than she was, but she never got a tutor when she was queen. It was when she was growing up that she got tutors. But uh, let's, it got me wondering about her education. So I thought, let's find out. So the queen and her sister were educated at home, like many wealthy girls were at that time. And when she was a young girl, Queen Elizabeth's mother taught her how to read. So when she turned seven, a governess was hired. And the governess wasn't very good at mathematics, but no one cared too much at that time. So the Princess of York, Queen Elizabeth's mother, and her dad didn't like school. In fact, they hated school. And someone had said that the prince was a dunce. So no wonder they didn't like school that much. So Miss Crawford was the governess, and she had a regime that was gentle. Uh, Elizabeth received lessons from 9.30 until 11 in the morning, and the rest of the day was devoted to outdoor games, dancing and singing, and a rest period of an hour and a half. And according to History.com, or HistoryExtra.com, unlike her parents, Elizabeth had an aptitude for learning and enjoyed history and literature, but she had little opportunity for sustained study. Queen Mary criticized their education and said that, you know, during the holidays she tried to get Elizabeth to do more homework, but she didn't want to. Elizabeth was fond of dogs and horses, and she declared she wanted to marry a farmer so she could have lots of cows, horses, and dogs. So things changed one day when she was 10 years old. Queen Elizabeth found out that her dad was about to become the king, and her sister Margaret asked her, does that mean you're going to be the next queen? Elizabeth said, yes, someday, and Margaret said, poor you. <laughs> so Queen Mary, Elizabeth's grandmother, then requested that Elizabeth get a better education. In 1938, Elizabeth began receiving lessons from the Vice Provost of Eton, Henry Martin, on constitutional history, and Martin's teachings were important to Elizabeth's perception of her role, and he told her that the monarchy was strengthened by adaptability and talked about the importance of broadcasting directly to her subjects. And according to journalist Clive Irving, author of The Last Queen, Elizabeth II's 70-year battle to save the House of Windsor, Queen Elizabeth would look back on her education with regret of not gaining the broader knowledge. Irving said that both the Queen and Princess Margaret had complained about their education growing up, even though Margaret was freer to develop wide cultural interests. The sisters were the last members of the royal family to have an education made up of tutors and governesses. Today, many royals receive a more formal education, according to Clive Irving, and perhaps a path Queen Elizabeth wished was an option for her. Uh, when Elizabeth turned 18, she began to assume royal duties. Her father insisted she be made a counselor of the state, and that's usually only open to those who have reached 21. And she stood in for him when he was briefly in Italy, signing a reprieve on a murder case, and she made her first public speech at a children's hospital, and launched HMS Vanguard in the autumn, but she wanted more. She desired to serve in the forces. In early 1945, the king relented and allowed her to join the Auxiliary Territorial Service as a trainee ambulance driver. According to HistoryExtra.com, in February 1947, the princess left the country for the first time for a tour in South Africa with her parents and sister. There she celebrated her 21st birthday. She reviewed troops, attended a ball in her honor, and gave an address to the empire. In it, she pledged her future, I declare before you that my whole life, whether it shall be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. And she had spent a long time in the nursery, but now at 21, on the brink of marriage, in less than five years, she would become the queen. After Prince Philip broke to Elizabeth the news of her father's death, Martin Chatteris, the assistant private secretary to the new queen, asked her what she intended to be called. Elizabeth, of course, she replied. The royal party returned immediately to England. In the Elizabeth R. documentary for the BBC marking the 40th anniversary of her ascension, she explained, In a way, I didn't have an apprenticeship. My father died much too young. It was all a very sudden kind of taking on and making the best job you can. 
It's a question of maturing into something one has got used to doing and accepting that here you are and that's your fate. Because I think continuity is very important. It's a job for life. And how the queen did her job, according to people.com, resolutely neutral in political matters with a knack for connecting with others while giving very little of herself away. She had a great curiosity about people and was a great judge of character, says Samantha Cohen, her former assistant private sec secretary. She was interested in people, and that was the great unifying force. With all those prime ministers and leaders, she was able to relate to them as people. Male leadership is often transactional, and female leadership is relational. And she built relationships with people like Nelson Mandela and uh, Ronald Reagan, and those relationships endured. And what made Queen Elizabeth a great leader? The following is according to the online article by Lincoln. Uh, the Queen had a strong sense of duty and responsibility, and Queen Elizabeth was known for being fair and impartial, and she worked hard to ensure that everyone in her organization was treated with respect and dignity. Queen Elizabeth II was known for having a clear vision and strategy for her organization, and she worked to align the efforts of her team to achieve her goals. Queen Elizabeth II was known for being a strong communicator and for fostering collaboration within her organization. She was also known for being adaptable and resilient. And she demonstrated this by navigating her organization through many challenges and changes. So the queen wasn't as uneducated as she thought she was. And when her father thought she would be in line for the throne, she started to study constitutional history and law as a preparation for her future role. She received tuition from her father as well, as well as sessions with Henry Martin, the vice provost of Eton. And she was also educated by in religion by Archbishop of Canterbury. And she had a stateliness about her, and it drew the leaders of the other countries in. She also had wit. She was hardworking and humble, and most of all, enthusiastic. It was a great combination, and it helped her be a queen that will never be forgotten. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed the episode. And if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be great. And I hope everybody's been having a good day. And tune in again soon for another episode of Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Thank you.